We all saw the videos. When it was discovered that secret tunnels were being built underneath a prominent synagogue in New York City. Hundreds of Jewish men disobeying police officers and attempting to block access to the underground tunnel. Hauling out soil mattresses. With many being arrested throughout the chaos. We heard the excuses change with each passing day. At first claiming the tunnels were built to avoid COVID restrictions and then claiming that the tunnels were built to avoid the possibility of future COVID restrictions. And finally, the claim that it was simply youngsters among the community who had simply carried out the construction themselves without adult knowledge or supervision. None of this was adding up. So I set out to New York City to find the answers and unearth the truth about the tunnels. Seven Seventy Eastern Parkway, Brooklyn, New York, also known as the Seven Seventy. It is the street address of the world headquarters of the Chabad Lubavitch Hasidic movement. The Chabad Lubavitch movement is widely considered to be the most dynamic force in Jewish life today, and it is where, just a few weeks ago, secret underground tunnels were discovered, causing a police response to what many have called a riot at the famous synagogue. Members of the Chabad Lubavitch community firmly believe that a late Menashem Mendel Schneerson, a Ukrainian-born rabbi and the seventh Rebbe of the Chabad Lubavitch dynasty, was the Jewish Messiah, and that Schneerson will be resurrected from the dead and to be revealed to the world, and that he was and is in fact the Jewish Messiah. The Rebbe was and still is the most prolific and influential man in Jewish life today. A local man had tipped me off to some underground tunnels where stories of kidnapping and disappearances continued throughout New York City. So we went in to see what we could find. We're in Brooklyn right now investigating the tunnels that we've been getting tipped off about. Here's some about some strange activity going on the tunnel. When we walked down here, we did see a child jacket that was abandoned, which is pretty strange, along with some other children's clothes, socks, and underwears, etc. Is that we've talked about to a few of the locals that also said they've seen some activity in and outside of this tunnel. Hopefully, we get some transparency and get down to the bottom of it together. We're in one of the tunnels right now, exploring, going a little bit deeper, We're about to break off to the right and exit off on the train tracks and go to the actual official portion of the tunnel that isn't connected to the train and has no infrastructure whatsoever. Secret passage over there down to the right. 
So we're just going to try to see what we can find out here. Uh, as of right now, we see a lot of children products without any explanation. So right here, it's about faded out. It's the, what it looks like to me, and this is not even starting to start as a conspiracy, it looks like the squiggly triangle pyramid that the FBI recognizes as a pedophilia symbol. Like I stated before, it could just be a huge coincidence with that. I find it pretty odd, just those symbols. But yet again, like I stated, the far from gold, here is yet this symbol that we saw a little bit earlier. This time it has some color with it, and it's a little bit more defined. And yet again, the all seeing eyes at the top of the forehead well, this time it's at the top of the forehead. Last time the all seeing eye was uh, by itself and the skull was at the bottom. On this one, I see both of them are joined together and uh, create one image. So it's just stated, the farther we get in the tunnel, very strange symbolism. So my name is Vanny Wax, and uh, I'm a survivor of child sexual abuse. So I was uh, born and raised uh, within an ultra-Orthodox environment. Um, my dad is Australian, my mum Israeli, um, and I am one of 17 children in a very strict religious environment, ultra-Orthodox. The religion is all-encompassing. Every aspect of your day is really dictated by religion and is really all-encompassing in, in terms of the effect it has on you, the expectation on you. At the age of about 11 or 12 years old, I was within um, a, an institution called the Yeshiva Center, which is an ultra-Orthodox um, main institution of our community, our ultra-Orthodox community in Melbourne, Australia. And um, we used to um, study from early in the morning to late at night. And um, one of the people from the community, his role, besides from working nine to five regular job, uh, he was, besides being obviously ultra-Orthodox, he used to read the Bible in synagogue every Sabbath. Essentially, what started was the grooming process. Obviously, at the time, I had no idea of what that word actually means, um, grooming. But now, in hindsight, I understand. So essentially, what that means, and in my case, was that he um, groomed me to essentially abuse me. After going through that process, at some point, he escalated and um, and did what he um, essentially um, had planned to do, which was to sexually abuse me. And I'll never forget the uh, first time it happened, which was inside the Yeshiva Center synagogue um, during the holiday of the, the religious holiday of Shavuot. I, I remember this basically getting up at some point, uh, my legs and my, my, I remember my pants and underpants was um, were down around my uh, ankles and um, and I just remember kind of almost as if I blacked out or something. This abuse happened at least another two times by this person in another synagogue as well where we used to go, uh, my family and he used to go there as well. Um, there was another uh, perpetrator. Um, his name is David Cypress and the reason I can say his name now is because he was convicted um, and, and sentenced and was already um, released from jail after that. But it happened regularly, even just on the clothes, just that initially it was molestation, um, touching the penis and the nice things on the, on the clothes. Um, you know, again, it's, it's like when I speak about it now, it's just um, still shocking to me how something like that could have happened there. And as it turns out, I wasn't the only one. Um, and this, this was at the age of... of uh, about 14 and a half. The abuse with him lasted for about two and a half years. Um, obviously, when the second perpetrator came along, I learned to keep my mouth shut. I didn't say anything to anyone, but in hindsight, as it turns out, and this came out in the court cases, um, subsequently, it became very clear that many people were aware of at least some of the things that were going on, including in the leadership of the community. The head rabbi was fully aware uh, and some other rabbis were also aware. And if they were fully aware, all they had to do was inquire, ask questions, see what's going on, stand up for me for a vulnerable child who's being abused. And it was just shocking, shocking. And not only that, at the same time, I went to the head rabbi, the late Rabbi Grover, and I gave him 
the, and I and I started talking to him about these issues, and he was very clear that he was fully aware of what was going on, and he himself said to me, "You don't need to do anything about it. I'm on top of it. I'm dealing with it." And meanwhile, this my second abuser was still um, in the same positions of authority as he was while he abused me all the years before that, in spite of the fact that this rabbi, this head rabbi, was aware of at least some of the abuse against me, and as it turns out, against others. Um, it was so painful, it was very difficult, and um, I just had to leave it inside of me. Uh, as soon as my uh, story featured in 2011, countless victims went to the police, including approximately 15 victims who were abused by my second abuser, David Cypress. Uh, we know there are, there are you know, triple figure victims in his case. He abused over 100 people. Uh, the vast majority have never, never pursued the matter uh, and will never pursue. I had initially a lot of support even from within my former community, the ultra-Orthodox community. Um, this head rabbi straight away um, came out on the Sabbath sermon around a week after my story came uh, public, was published. He said from the pulpit, who gave you permission directed at me and my family and my parents were inside the city at the time. When I saw what unfolded at 770, which is a place that I personally had been to many times, uh, in some ways a home away from home, one word that came to me was lawlessness. There is complete law lawlessness in that institution, in that community, and what ultimately that causes is vulnerability. And those who are most vulnerable in those cases are children. And But what this particular episode of the law lawlessness that I saw in 770 really brought home to me the fact which I suspected is that there is lawlessness within that community. It's, you know, the rabbis control certain things, what they're interested in, what they want to do. And therefore, I felt that their community are certainly much more vulnerable than other communities. The 770 is the international headquarters of the Chabad Lubavitch movement, of which I was a member. And that happens uh, that they have these Chabad houses across the world. Often these rabbis have been the root of the problem rather than the solution. For someone. How you doing? Doing good. How about yourself? Good, thank God. Hey, hey. Nice to meet you. You My too. Name is Levy Jacobs. Dom, nice to meet you. Why don't you uh, come in and check it out? Yeah, we can. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, Great. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Is it good? They, they follow yeah. me? They're good? Yeah. Thank you. How was it? Uh, yes. Uh, yes. Picture, picture, picture. Uh, yes, of course. Together. Yes. Yeah, man. Yeah. Hi. Meet up, meet up, Okay. No, no, no. I don't want to serve anything. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hi. Hi, you too. Thank you. That's right. Hi. Hello, hello. Hi. Maybe Rabbi, this is Rabbi Gerlitsky. Nice Maybe night. actually some of the guys are celebrating in the back. Okay. Today is um, 74 years since the Rabbi, wow. um, King Messiah, took leadership, assumed leadership of the Chabad Bavich wow. movement. He's the one that had passed? Is he the one to pass? Well, that's yeah, controversial well, yeah. Well, yeah, uh, thing to yeah. bring up, but... Well, yeah, 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 but I'm saying... But, but now yes. they're 74 years today, so some guys are in so the okay, back. Okay, so it's an you. important day. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, you want to see them? Yes, sir, yeah. That will work. We have here... We drink here, uh, the booth. Awesome. You're the guy from the, from the subway, no? Yes, uh, from the... the... Video, the... the oh, X. The shirt open? No, that wasn't you. Oh, no, that's not me, sorry. Yeah. Please, look how they celebrate. Yeah, 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 yeah,
So they are celebrating the life of the Mashiach. I've been getting so it's a um I don't know. This is your personal card you can take also information. To put the rumors to rest, just to put the facts out there. Um, this synagogue is is uh, too small for the capacity of the certain times during the main prayers. There's not enough room here. Yeah. So certain uh, people, which is it's just dragging out for no reason, adjacent to the building, mm -hmm. the properties are owned by the Chabad yes. movement, and just dragging out for certain stupid reasons that it was never got expanded. Hey. Double, we can double the size yeah. of the synagogue. Yes. So certain yeah. guys started digging it out in a certain area just to initiate, yes. initiate it, to initiate uh, the isolated, project. Isolated problem. Yeah. No, the the property adjacent hey. along this wall, they started okay. digging out under the area where the windows are. Yes, sir. To they started digging out to uh, initiate this project of expanding this synagogue and all the property adjacent. Yeah. And uh, it was done without permits. So the NYPD came to close it down. That's the whole story. Yeah, yeah. And the conspiracies, I don't have time for. I, can, I, I put you down the mere facts. Yes. And uh, we have to, we focus on, on creating light in this world. The darkness will get pushed away on its own. When you have a yes, dark room and you light even a small candle, light, uh, light it pushes away the darkness. Maybe yeah. they'll say that it was a bank also across the street. Yes. Maybe we were... You know, yeah. you want to say conspiracies yeah, yeah. that can go on and on, and uh, people will say that the 9/11 was an inside job. Yes. People say the moon landing never happened. I don't know. Yeah. You know, I can I'm just sick. say the, the mere facts. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. And that's just what I came down here for. You know, just so to kind of give people a view into the just truth. Take the view. No, no, no. That's why. I'm, that's why I'm yeah. here to give them a view. And I've done a lot of research. Yeah. I see it's more so about you know uh, the Messiah from yeah. 75 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing to do with the children. Just people. They fear what they yeah. don't understand. And I just came here. here. Actually, if your cameras can show up here. There's a balcony with a closed with the curtain. Oh. The Rebbe used to get up on that balcony and times on live television and encourage this singing of the song that we're singing now that the Rebbe is the Messiah. Yes, yes. And that's what I've been just trying to validate. I have about not a million people that follow oh, us online. Nice. What's your name? Dom Luker. Dom Luker yes, and Mendy Gorlitsky. It's a pleasure to meet you. Thank yes, you so thank much you. for having time to talk. Yeah. Yes. Sure. Thanks for coming. Stay here for the prayer. The prayer is going to be a quarter to seven. Okay. It's quarter to seven? Okay. okay. Would you like a Lachayim, sir? Okay. He's still the most respected Messiah. He's the, yeah. the leader of everybody. Yeah. The entire world, not just not just. Jewish yeah, because there's 77. Yeah. 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 With you? Yeah, I'll say the Chaim also. Let's say the Chaim. Uh, what was it, Ron? Uh, Dom. 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 Yes, sir. Everybody, will say the Chaim together. Yehi adineinu mereinu verabeinu melech hamashiach leilam vod. Long live our master, King Mashiach, forever and ever. Chaim. Chaim. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. It's, it'll be on X mainly on Twitter, but it probably will pop on YouTube as well. Yes. Dom Luker. Yes, Luker. Yes, sir. Luker. Mm -hmm. E-R. Dom Luker? It's private property. Uh, L-U-C-R-E? Yo, sir, sir, it's private property. Yeah. Part of the management. Okay, yeah, you guys have to, you guys have to okay. leave. This is private. It's private property. Yeah. All right. No problem. We'll get Thank out. You. you need to stop filming. And you're Thank you. You got this, right? Yeah, that way. That way, that's the exit. Please don't film it. What's your name? Please don't film it. Thank you. We're invited in. Please stop filming right now. Again, stop filming right now. Stop filming. Right now. Stop filming. Do you understand?
Do you guys don't follow any rules? What, what is this? No, this is pri this is private property. Well, we can do it this in a row. You got? You want to stand over there? You can stand yeah, we can. There. Yeah, we can. You can't. I, I, again, I told you very, very. That's understandable. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, we were invited in. So we were invited in and we were kicked out. The uh, We're about to start the ceremony in about two hours. They were going to go ahead and celebrate for the Messiah and his uh, return to the well, his initial start with the church from 74 years ago. And for some reason, I think the management of the Shabbat Center just kicked us out. I don't really too much know why. We'll find out some more details moving forward. But at first, it was a really good time. We were getting down to some really good questions. Got a lot of validation down. But uh, I guess some call was sent up from the top and they shut it down. Mm. Yeah, so we're down here out in Brooklyn right now investigating the claims of children being trafficked used through tunnels. We're speaking to the residents in New York to validate or invalidate these claims itself. Uh, we've been hearing some good stuff from a lot of great people that's claiming that these tunnels are being used indeed to traffic children. It's tragic, man. That's tragic. It's like, it, it, it's basically, it's, it's modern human slavery yeah. now these days. And what's even sadder is that all this is in the Bible and all this like as far as as like Jesus said these little ones anybody touches these little yeah. ones and it says it in the Bible anybody touches these little ones woe to them so when I feel like it, it, it's crazy mm -hmm. because now they they doing all this and I just recently I just recently seen Sound of Freedom yeah so okay I I I, I, I it, it, I can't, I can't, it's sad that America is the most, this is, they don't, they the most biggest clients yep. for, for the children. For the children. They'll take, like I said, they'll take a little kid like this, snatch him up, 40 40 seconds seconds the next person and keep going. Oh, wow. And you turn around, oh, my like, goodness. where's my kid? It, yeah, it's, you oh, it's structured and it's, oh, man, wow. It's like, it's like, it's like. Like you got lieutenants, you got. Oh wow! Lieutenants. People are seeing this stuff like every day, not knowing, not aware that he's. Yeah. Knowing that this is what's going on, knowing that this is a place to go to, they have hotel rooms and and and, and secret passes. They have auctions. Auctions. Oh, wow. Yeah, I believe New York is. I believe all those videos of all those little kids you see in molested and stuff like that. That look like it's happening in other countries. It's happening right mm. here in Brooklyn. Uh, I would say definitely in this country, mm. it's a secret society with traffic trafficking of whatever it could be keys of human beings or you know uh, yes, all sir. type of prostitutions, uh, you know, a ring for, for, for the yeah yes, sir. for the good of, of evil. Yes, sir. Hey, we just arrived to uh, yet another tunnel location that we were tipped off on. We're going to do some investigation to see what's going on here. We were told that there was a secret tunnel entrance in the woods up here in upstate New York. We're going to validate some of the claims that we got about it and see what's going on down here.
It seems what may have been happening in the 770 tunnels was simply lawlessness. However, it's hard to say considering how quickly it was covered up and how many excuses were used to sweep away the inquiry. Clearly, there is a lot that's happening underneath the streets of New York City. And there are miles and miles of tunnels where everything from human trafficking and satanic rituals are taking place. Ultimately, it feels like there are only more questions than answers. Questions that may continue to remain unanswered. buried underneath the lights and sounds of America's cultural epicenter. The urban sprawl that is New York City. <laughs>